Hi, I just wanted to give you a quick introduction to Atlas GeoPortal and where all your data is saved. Um, first thing you're going to do is you'll land on to a world map that has your project loaded. Once you click on the project, it'll populate. As you can see, I apologize, I missed this corner. Usually we fly off of KMLs and I didn't get one on this project and so I tried to eyeball it and I was just a little short. Um, on here, as you can see along the left hand side, you see I have your design loaded, I have your survey loaded, and I have uh, the plat map as well as the RVI concept loaded. Along the top toolbar here, if this site is flown multiple times, each flight would be listed right here and you can just select the dates that you want to view and it'll overlay them for you. In this chain link here, this is where we put all your CAD files and things like that and your native MP4s and images. So your MP4s and images and JPEGs and things like that will be here. I flew this project with three different drones so this one contains some of the data from two drones. And I saw on your website that you guys do Matterport tours and so I wanted to put a link there to the Matterport tour. We also do those and would love to help you out for those as well. On the one with the camera, this is where all your uh, digital media goes. So all your fly-throughs, your videos, and things like that, you can scroll up and down. There's, you know, five or six of them in here. So you can see all those here. Uh, if you ever want to share the map, all you do is click on this share button link right here. Type their email address in here. Select what you want them to view. Hit add, and they get a link. That's how easy it is. Along the right hand side here are simple measuring tools. You can do it in linear measurements, area measurements, volume calculations. Uh, you can add a pen if you want to send a note to a different trade. Uh, you can take cross sections, get coordinates, and you can also print all the media. So let's dive in and take a look. As you can see, I'm just scrolling in with my scroll wheel. This is the 2D orthomosaic. You can left click and hold in order to scroll around and view uh, the entire site. For example, here's the blast area. Again, I'm just using my scroll wheel, left click and hold in order to move the map around. If you want to switch and see what it looks like in 3D, all you do is hit this 3D point cloud in here, scroll in again, right click and hold in order to move the map around, scroll in, right click and hold, move the whole map. You can just left click and hold and move the whole map. You can take measurements while both in 2D and 3D view, um, but for right now, um, I'm going to skip back to 2D view and show you how you can overlay some of your data. So I'm just going to click the ortho mosaic again. I'll scroll out a little bit just so you can see the original starting point. First thing I like to do is overlay your design. Uh, keep in mind that uh, there's no GCPs that were visible on the site, and so we weren't able to bring this into your coordinate system. So I processed it in state plane and then just overlaid your data. So uh, I think I'm accurate within a, a few centimeters here, but uh, I would definitely recommend that all sites are flown with ground control. Let's look at this upper pad here and how you can use the portal to view the data. As you can see, um, the pad's still short. It's not quite where the design needs to be. Um, so you can take measurements, for example, uh, left click to begin the measurement. Uh, double left click to terminate the measurement and as you can see that they're about 27 feet from having that pad totally um, extended if you will in order to meet design you can put on here you know uh, measurements for pad 61 or whatever you want for pad 61 and then you can export those measurements uh, in a DWG or PDF or however you want. Or you can send it to the trade so they know exactly what you want them to do. You can also overlay um, just toggling on your survey over here. And so you can see your contours are appearing from your survey. So you can have a look at what they look like together with the design and what current conditions look like. Again, if you want to toggle back to the point cloud and see it in 3D, you can do so. You know, right click and scroll so you can see really how deep that is and how much more material they got to move to extend that pad out 27 feet. Uh, while in 3D or 2D, you can take volume calculations. We always recommend it, that you do it in 3D. But let's scroll in on the stockpile right here. I'll show you how to take volume calculations. You just hit this volume measurement button. 
You can scroll in and then start left clicking to create a polygon around the stockpile that you're measuring. So I'll just quickly do that. This is just a series of left clicks here. And to terminate the me measurement, double left click. And then as you see, uh, you got your net volume right here of that stockpile. And again, you can give it a description. We'll just put gravel fill. And again, you can send that to the trades if you want. Now I'm going to quickly scroll over to another site to show you how you can overlay uh, data from two different projects. Uh, this site we did the planometrics on, so that's what all that coloring lines that you see. I'm going to toggle that off for better view here. And then you notice uh, you have a different feature here. It says split view because we've flown this multiple times. So what I'm going to do is select the second date that we flew it. And so now the two dates are being overlaid on top of each other. Again, I'll toggle off the planometrics. Now I'll scroll in for greater view. There's an area up here on the upper left-hand corner of this site where they had their stockpile located. And I'll kind of show you that right here. This on the right-hand side is the older date. Uh, on the left-hand side is the current state. You just drag left-hand and drag this across, and you can see how they have moved that stockpile. And then you can left click and drag to other parts of the site that you want and you can compare the two dates. Scroll in for greater detail, left click and hold and scroll back and forth so you can see exactly what's been done between the two, two dates. You can also overlay the point cloud so I'm going to disable the split view and then we'll choose the point cloud and we'll overlay the point cloud from those two site two dates and so you can see exactly how that looks. So we're going to hit the just add on the other date. We'll scroll into the same area. As you can see, the older states, the orange color, where you can see the stockpile, and the more natural looking colors, the current conditions. As you can see, I drew a cross section here. So we can view that cross section just by pulling it up here. And we can look at the profile by hitting the eye icon here. And so this will have a profile in there. Right click and hold and move that. Scroll in a little bit. The top here is what the previous state looked like. And this bottom layer right here is what the current state looks like. So if you need to know the quantity difference and you want to put it into CAD, you can obviously export that as a CSV file or an LAS file and do so. We can also produce a heat map if multiple flights have been gone. So I'm going to toggle off the line work again, toggle on the volume heat map function. And as you can see, a heat map is produced that shows you your cut fill as well as your net volumes on this site. So you can see they've moved quite a bit of material. All right. Well, that ends it for this presentation. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at scott at dronetechimaging.com or scott at atlasgeoportal.com. We'd love to earn your business both on your drone flights as well as your Matterport tours if you uh, needed help on that. Thanks for your time.